Hi, this is Chapter 5, Lesson 3, or Basic Concepts of Stocks and Bonds. So here, first, let us, let's discuss what are stocks. So, when we say stocks, this means a share of ownership in a company or a corporation. So, there are two types of stocks. We have the common stocks and the preferred stocks. So for common stocks, this gives the owner the rights as to who they feel should be a part of the company's board of directors. So this gives the owner or the stockholder certain voting rights. For preferred stocks, they only get the preference in dividend payments. However, they do not have voting rights. So there are three main factors affecting stock prices. First, we have the supply and the demand. In economics, supply and demand are inversely related so if the supply is increasing the demand decreases but if the supply is decreasing then the demand increases second is the value of the company and the market confidence so the higher the value of the company and the higher the market confidence is the higher will be the stock prices of that certain company third is the earnings of the company so of course no company would survive without its earnings and it's considered as one of the most important factors so if the company earns much then of course the price of its stocks or shares will be higher meanwhile Bonds refer to a certificate which proves that the company or corporation borrowed money from a certain group of individuals or investors for a definite period of time at a fixed rate. So these are the following basic elements of bonds. So face value is also known as par value. So this refers to the amount stated in the bond to be used by the bond issuer in calculating the interest to be paid to the bondholder once the bond matures. So this is also called as the principal amount from which uh, of the of the bond. Okay, so this will be used to solve for the interest that will be given to the bondholder. Dividend refers to the amount of interest that will be given to the bondholder, while dividend rate is the interest rate. So this is also known as yield. Coupon dates refer to interval dates. It could be either annual or semi-annual. So annual is once a year and semi-annual is twice a year, which the bond issuer will make interest payments. So, the coupon dates will tell you when the bond issuer will be giving interest payments to the bondholder. The maturity date okay, gives you the date the bond will mature or the bond will be fully paid by the bond issuer. Then, the maturity value is the amount that will be paid to the bondholder on the coupon date. Next, we have different types of bonds. We're, uh, first is the corporate bonds. So corporate bonds are issued by most established corporations. Second are secured bonds. So these are bonds which are backed up by corporate collaterals that have substantial value such as a property, plant, or equipment. On the contrary, if the bond is not secured by a collateral, you call it an unsecured bond. So this is also known as debenture bonds because these bonds are issued only with good faith and no collateral. Fourth is the convertible bond. So this type of bonds can be interchanged with the shares of stocks if the bondholder chooses to. And the fifth is called callable bonds. So callable bonds are bonds that can be literally recalled or redeemed by the issuer even before the bonds mature. So when we say callable bonds, this could be 
uh, this could be payable by the bond issuer even before it matures or even before the maturity date. So here are some important terms that you must remember when we say stock market. This is a place where investors go to trade equity resources or securities. For example, shares and stocks issued by corporations. Of course, if we have the stock market, we also have the bond market. So this is where they go to buy and sell that securities or bonds. Now take note that the owner of the stocks is called a stockholder. The owner of the bond is called a bondholder. Some companies give portion of the company's income to their stockholders and you call this portion as the dividend. So what are some differences between stocks and bonds? First, stocks is a form of equity financing or raising money by allowing investors to become a part owner of the company. On the other hand, bonds are a form of debt financing or raising money by borrowing from investors. However, if they are issued bonds, they are not given the chance to become a part of the company. So for stocks, these pri uh, their prices may vary every day, even every second. So these prices are reported in various media like the newspapers and the internet. So for bonds, on the other hand, investors are only guaranteed interest payments and a return of their money at the maturity date. So the value is already fixed and there is a fixed interest rate and a fixed amount of money to be paid. So the prices do not increase nor decrease. For stocks, investing on them will involve some uncertainty. Again, this is because uh, stock prices vary every day. So if the stock prices increase, then the invest investors will earn money, but they will also lose money if the stock prices decrease. Worst case scenario, if the company goes bankrupt, their stocks or shares of stocks will have no value at all. On the other hand, for bonds, the uncertainty only comes from the ability of the bond issuer to pay the bondholders. Now take note, bonds issued by the government pose lesser risk than those by companies because of course, government has guaranteed funding. For stocks, there is higher risk but with possibility of higher returns. Again, because there are times that stock, stock prices increase. So if stock prices increase over time, then there will be a possibility of higher returns. But of course, it's high risk because there's also a pos possibility of bankruptcy. For bonds, however, this is low risk but low yield. So, there is very little risk that you will lose your money. However, there is uh, only a lower interest or lower income as compared to stocks. So, stocks can be appropriate if investment is for long term. So, this can allow investors to wait for stock prices to increase if ever they go low. So, however, for bonds, this is appropriate for short-term uh, investments or for those who need their money soon. So, we have here the theory of efficient markets. According to this theory, we have to trust market prices because all available information are already incorporated in the stock prices. So, they say that there are no hidden charges when it comes to stock prices. So investors cannot generate systematic profits except by chance and knowing past data will not give investors an edge over the others. So uh, there is no accurate predictor that will give you uh, or that will predict what will be the stock prices in the future. So it's only by chance that investor can gain money here. So this is a sample of a stock market index. So under index, we have here the following categories. For value, that tells you the value of the stock market. Change is the amount of change from the previous report. A positive change, the CHG, positive change, will tell you that the, 
the value increased while a negative change means that the value decreased. Percent change or percent CHG is uh, or gives you the percent of change from the previous report. So again, a negative change means that the value has lowered while a positive change means that the value of the stocks has increased. Meanwhile, this is a sample stock table. So 52 week high, this one, tells you the highest value okay, that the certain stock of a certain company has achieved within 52 weeks or one year. 52 week low, on the contrary, tells you the lowest amount or value that the stocks of the company has achieved within 52 weeks or one year. So the stock, this is the name of the company. Open is the opening price. High is the highest price for that day. Low is the lowest price for that day. Close is the closing price. And volume tells you the number of stocks that has been sold and bought for that certain day. So that is all for this lesson. See you in the next one. Bye-bye!